He was a dynamic high school football player at Richfield. He was a dynamic player at Baylor and also in the NFL with the Vikings. Alfred Anderson joins us. Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. In 1983, Baylor beat Brigham Young 40-36. to Alfred scored a couple of touchdowns, including the game winner, had 140-plus yards, and he joins us. Alfred, how much do you still kind of recall that game? Oh, man, that's one of the best games uh, that I played. I, I mean, you can go on uh, YouTube or put it up, and, and I always go back and just to look at that, just the highlights of that game on YouTube. So, so I'm, as, like I said, that was a game to remember, and uh, uh, great memories. I went on. Considering, yeah. Consider, considering we played, we played on a, a you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't expect us to to, to play or to win as many games as, as we did, and to come in and start the game all with with Brigham Young and and uh, and to win, uh, that, that showed everybody that hey, don't take us lightly. <laughs> I, I watched highlights of that game on YouTube, including the game-winning touchdown where you guys were down inside the five for a couple of plays, and then you leaped. I mean, just like a catapulted into the end zone. What was that specific moment? Even though Brigham Young was right back down the field, what was that moment like? Well, you know, that, that that's my favorite play. I, I think you can ask Walter Albuquerque. I mean, that, that was our favorite play is going over. And, I, and, and once we go over the top, can't nobody stop us. But it was, uh, you know, once we scored, it was like, uh-oh, they got enough enough time on the clock that, that uh, see Young and bring them back with you almost did. <laughs> Alfred, uh, that was the game where uh, you know, every kind of ran over. It was just such a great game. Have you ever – did you ever were a part of a game before or since where both teams, even the losing one, uh, were just so happy that it was over and that you could just uh, kind of celebrate it together even though BYU lost? Absolutely. I, I guess another – uh, team would be like uh, when 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 we my freshman year when we played uh, SMU, we were in that same same boat, and I uh, ended up pulling it out. But but those are the exciting games. You know, you want to be on top of it. You want to win it. You don't want to lose, even though it's a great game. You always want to win. <laughs> The history of this rivalry is unique because of those years back in the '80s, and then Brigham Young, of course, got Baylor uh, the very next year. I think it was the year they may have won the national championship. And then, of course, they started playing again last year. And now Brigham Young's about to be a part of the conference. Yeah, What are your thoughts about Baylor and Brigham Young playing again? Uh, that's, that's awesome. I, I mean, I'm, and I'm glad to, to have them uh, be a part of the Big 12. I mean, they, they, they bring a lot to the table. And, uh, and I was just remembering when we did beat them, you know, Steve Young and I, we played uh, in the Japan Bowl together. And he was, he came up to me and he said, you know what? Baylor kept us from winning the national championship that year. <laughs> and so, so that was that was real real big on us beating them. Because otherwise, after we beat them, they won 10 games in a row. Mm -hmm. They did. Alfred Anderson, former Baylor running back with us on 365 Sports. You uh... – you had a heck of a career, high school, college, and pro. And, you know, obviously you were, a, what, rookie of the year with the Vikings. Do you think sometimes that, that people forget how good you were at all three levels? Uh, maybe some people might. And, and, and who knows? After I got over to Baylor, a lot of people were looking for me to be a quarterback, you know, and as I reflect back, I would have liked to see what would have happened if I would have stayed there. But, but you know, during that time, there wasn't a lot of black quarterbacks in the league. And so I knew that I would have to play another position. But, but I always wonder what would have happened or what would have came over that if, if I would have been able to play. Uh, but, you know, I have said that uh, the, right before I got to, to a day that Baylor, I, I broke my right wrist. So I, so I had to be in the cast for about eight or nine weeks. And so uh, so I knew I couldn't play quarterback then. But, uh, but like I said, I, I think on each level, I think I, I uh, through the grace of God, that I, I, I uh, did 
well and I and, 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 and happy of uh, my play from high school to college to, to pro. Alfred, the uh, the Baylor football team, they've had like a roller coaster of really, really good and a couple of bad times as well. Now in their third coach, Art Bryles and Matt Rule and now Dave Aranda. How much do you get a chance to watch them and your thoughts about who they are right now? Oh, I'm as excited, man. I'm, I'm so excited. I got season tickets. Uh, I missed last week's game because my son plays. Uh, he had a game at three. And they were running behind. And so uh, he didn't play to about 4 o'clock Saturday. And by the time they got done, it was like 5.30. I said, oh, man, I, I, I can't go to Baylor now. But but I'm excited, man, what, what, what Coach Aranda is putting together. And, and, and plus, the way Baylor is building, you know, the campus, mm-hmm. all the sports, all the sports, and, and a lot of young kids recognize that, hey, Baylor is a great school, a great athletic program. And uh, so we're seeing a lot of good good 5A players come to Baylor. Uh, Alfred, my friend Keith Thornell, uh, who I believe is a mutual <laughs> friend of ours, uh, yes. <laughs> sent me a, a text when he found out that you were going to be on the show today. And he said that you are a very trusting person and that when you went to the NFL, you wanted to have an agent you could trust. So you had a friend of yours, Gary Matson, become your agent, even though that's not what he did? That's, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. I, uh, because of Gary, he was my agent. I, I, I ended up going with, with uh, Gary Matson because ever since I was 12 years old, he always was there and, and watched me from junior high to, through high school, through college. And so I remember as I was getting ready to look for an agent, I asked him, I said, Big G, I said, can you come to this meeting with me? And he said, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll come to the meeting because I had an agent meeting with an agent that night. And so he came. And after the agent gave his spiel, and after he left, I said, Big D. I said, can you do that? And he said, sure, Alfred. I said, you're my agent. <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing that he had to get certified and do all that. Mm-hmm. But, but like I said, it was in God's plan and, 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 and that's someone I knew I could trust, you know. And so, so it worked out. It worked out good. <laughs> Alfred, after your career with the Vikings or in the NFL, how many, like, when did you stop missing the game, stop missing the roar of the crowd or the, the camaraderie? How long did that take, it, and or is it still there? No, it, it has dwindled down. I saw it. Only time I really watch football now is when Baylor's playing. I'm always in tune. Or Minnesota playing. Otherwise, you know, if, if they're not on TV, then I have to watch the Cowboys. But I, I'd say probably within six months after I, I left, after I left Minnesota, I said if I didn't get picked up by the end of the year, and this was in late August of '92 to December of '92. And I told myself if I didn't get picked up, I was going to retire. And the more that I didn't play on Sunday, mm-hmm. the more I was starting in, 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 uh, to enjoy not of uh, the pressure, not getting beat up, not being sore after each game. And so it, it kind of went down real quick after that. So as far as uh, constantly, and when I was playing, I was always watching, you know, watching different teams, you know, when I could. But uh, but but I guess within the the first five or six months, I started realizing that you know it's, it's not that. And like now, you know, but it, it's Baylor and, and Minnesota not playing, I can care less about football or watching it. Alfred, did you uh, you played the game. How many years after you played did you stop having aches and pains? <laughs> ah, I still have them. I was gonna say you still have them, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but 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 fortunately, I was blessed to play without any serious injuries compared to some of some of my former players and alumni. But but like I said, it, it was great. If I had to do it all over again, 
I wouldn't I wouldn't change one thing. There does seem to be, and there has been, a lot of discussion from the NFLPA and the National Football League about taking care of former players uh, better than perhaps they were. There's obviously a lot when it comes to uh, the health and all of that. Did did you get? Did, were you taken care of? Did you get anything new when they kind of renegotiated the last deal? Uh, yes, there, there were some things that we did get, you know, and I would love to have uh, got a, a lot more, but whatever we can get, hey, that's a blessing. Uh, one thing uh, we were able to get was uh, like uh, uh, the RHS, uh like when you pay out of your pocket, mm -hmm. they will come. They will come. They will come. They will come and uh, and interview. I mean, they will come and uh, hold on one second. It's okay. Yeah, like when, when you pay out of your pocket, they will uh, reimburse you. Yes, so sir. like a reimbursement form, form, and so you just have to turn in the receipts and, uh, and show that you paid it or whatever, and they'll reimburse you for what you paid out of pocket. So that was a blessing. And then also uh, they did increase the, the pension um, a little bit more than, than what we would have been getting. It would, it would be nice to be getting what uh, the, the current players are getting. And also for those who didn't, uh, who didn't get three years in or – for the, for the retirement pension. Now, those who got three years, uh, then now they, they are eligible to get uh, a, a pension. That's you great. Know, for those who played three years. So that, that was good because there's a lot of guys that only get two years, three years in, and never qualify for the NFL pension. So, so that was a blessing right there. So a lot of guys who got three years are real happy with that, you know, and, and we'll see when the, when the next collective bargaining agreement come around, see if we can get some more. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it is almost like back pay, and it's, it was long overdue, and I know it was a hard fight, and, you know, Gene Upshaw and others along the way were trying to get that done. One of the things, uh, the average NFL career is like three and a half years, no matter what position it is, and, of course, running back can be a dangerous position because of the hits and stuff that you take. Uh, Grant Taft, uh, on the sidelines when I was watching, of course, he was a major part of Baylor at that particular time and for a long, long time. And I watched him on the sideline, that jaw, that, that face, that granite face. Your thoughts about the impact that he had on your life as a football player and as a man? Oh, Coach Taft, my fact, I just texted him uh, yesterday because I saw that uh, – uh, a tree fell on his car and, 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 and his house got flooded out. Uh, and so I, you know, I'm always checking on him because he is, he's like a father. He's my second family. And so when I talk, when I talk about Coach Taff, I'm also talking about Mother Taff as well. You mm -hmm. know, I can't talk about one without talking about the other one. But he has been a blessing in my life. Uh, man, back to high school and and once I uh, got got on to Baylor, you know, it was even better, uh, that relationship and just the leadership and plus the his Christian background, you know, and that's what draw me here closer to him because he's a man of faith and uh and, and my background too when it comes to the faith. So I couldn't be around a better coach, a better man a better person than, than GT, Coach Taff. <laughs> Alfred, we agree. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, reminiscing about the 83 win, the big game you had, the touchdown that won it, and also your career. Thank you very much, and good luck to your son with in, in playing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Big, big and bear. There you go. <laughs> Alfred Anderson, Richfield High School, Baylor, Minnesota Vikings. Uh, had a heck of a career at all three levels. Want to say uh, 